Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a testing technique that has quickly become my favorite way of testing in .NET and in general actually and it's called snapshot testing. Now don't leave, this is not just another way of testing, this is a way of actually validating the data in your tests. It is not about having unit testing, integration testing, acceptance tests and then snapshot tests, it is more about how we validate the outcome in any of those tests. So anything you're going to see in this video, I believe you can and should apply to any of your other tests. In fact, Dome Train, my courses platform, has exclusively tests like this just because of the value they're adding. So let me just quickly show you what I have here. I have a code base that I use when I'm running workshops around the world, and if you're interested in that, link below. And when I have a test, for example, like this, let's go into the deep dive and let's take a look at this foreign exchange API. Now, I'm not going to explain what exactly is going on in this API to deep. Basically, we have a currency that is the source currency and then we have the target currency and we want to see how much money we're going to get if we convert, let's say, $100 to whatever amount of pounds we get back. So we have our typical arrange act assert and this is a unit test, by the way, and we have our expected quote our expected rate, then we're setting up the database to be mocked basically, and then we make the call and then we validate the outcome. So if I just quickly run this test, exactly what you think will happen and the test will pass. We basically have an existing unit test. Now what this test is checking is that the result I'm getting from this uh, I quote service over here is the same as the one I am expecting. It's a very typical way of testing. And what I'm validating here is I'm validating that the result matches or is equivalent, meaning the properties on this object match what I should be expecting. And then I have many other tests. I have exceptions. I have more granular checks. But the thing about all of these verifications is that not only do you need to have an expected thing you want to validate against or all the properties you might want to validate against, but you have to write all that. And ultimately in testing, you just test for inputs and outputs. And this is fine, you know, it's fair, but this is only serviceable as we're going to see in this context. The more you scale out to other types of verification, like database verifications, HTTP requests, even photos and websites, this becomes way, way harder. Wouldn't it be great if we could just verify that the outcome we're getting is the expected one without having to say that's what I'm expecting? Well, that's where snapshot testing comes in. All it says is that's an accepted snapshot of what my outcome should be. Any other execution should match that. If it doesn't match that, then throw. Well, let's see how this looks in terms of implementation. So I'm going to go in my NuGet packages and I'm going to add verify and I'm going to add just the core verify package but because I'm using xunit I'm going to use a package for xunit so verify.xunit if you have any other uh, testing framework like ms test or any unit there's packages for those too in fact there's one for the new v3 version of xunit that's coming too even though that's not really released yet and that's one massive thing about this package the creator is absolutely incredible it's one of the most well supported NuGet packages I've ever seen and if you have a request it's very likely Simon will implement it once you request it. So now that I have the package, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say delete this expected quote. I don't want to have it anymore and remove this should over here. And instead, what I'm going to say is await, verify, and all I'm going to pass down is this result. And that is it. That's my test. No expected anything, no expected quote, no nothing. All I say is verify the result. How will that work? Well, let's go ahead and run the test and see what happens the first time you run the test with Verify. So it will start its engine behind the scenes and it's only slow for the first uh, request. And then we're going to see that this will fail and a diff window, depending on your ID, will pop up. And this, by the way, has both the in ID window and many, many other diff tools. So if you use any popular diff tool, you will have a window like this using that tool. And here all I see is a received.txt file for my test and then a verified.txt. The verified is the accepted outcome that I say, yeah, that's how it should respond and I'm happy with that. And on the left, I have what my response was from that call. And here, all I'm going to say is, yeah, this looks good. At this moment in time, that's what I think the response should look like. And I'm going to close the window and now I'm going to rerun the test because now, as you can see over here, I have two files. I have the received and the verified. So if I run this again, then as you're going to see, the test will find the existing verified package, it will match it, and the test 
will pass. And as you can see now, the test is green. Two things. Yes, you will have to store all the verified.txt files in your code base. So you're going to have to check them in in Git. The received.txt, you can delete. Now, verify is really, really good in checking for you if you've done any mistakes in your configuration. And the git ignore thing is actually fundamental. So if you have a git repo, verify is able to identify that and throw an exception and tell you, hey, you should do this. You should ignore these received.txt files. So what I'm going to say is new class verify check tests, and then a simple test that says verify checks.run. So if I run this, what's going to happen is a test will run. It's going to check my project and tell me what is wrong about my configuration about verify. And here it says expected.ignore or .git ignore to contain settings for verify. And it says add these settings in your git ignore. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to click on that thing, open my git ignore up, going to go to the very bottom over here, and then I'm going to just add this. And now if I run this test again, it's going to say, okay, you have it. You're properly ignoring your received.txt. So verify will actually ignore it and also delete it in subsequent runs. So if I run this test again, my test again will now pass. And I have this sanity check as well to make sure all my configuration is correct. And as you can see here, the test passed. Now that is fine for when things are going fine, but what happens when you have an exception thrown? Like here, I'm verifying with uh, Fluent Assessions that an exception is thrown of a specific type with a specific message. How would that work with Verify? Well, very similarly, all you have to say is await throws task because this is a task and pass down the action. And once I do that, I can delete this. And if I run this test over here, what this is going to do is wrap it in a try catch and verify the exception, meaning I'm expecting the exception to be thrown. And as you're going to see here, I'm going to get a window again with the exception type. And it only keeps the values that I actually care about, which is the negative amount exception, the property name, the message, and also over here, the stack trace without any numbers over here, line numbers, meaning that this will not fail as you keep adding new lines in your code. And now if I again run both of these tests, actually, then you're going to see both of them passing. And now you can see that this over here is ignored. Not only is it ignored, but after I run these tests, it will be automatically deleted for me from Verify. The tests are only slow for the first test. The rest are just reusing the same engine and they go away. So now that we have this, you might be wondering, well, I don't want to have all of these files in here. Couldn't I just have like a snapshots folder over here and move my accepted ones here? Well, you can, but you do have to configure Verify to know where that is. So what you can say is private read-only Verify settings, and we can store them here. And then you can go in your test and you can say use directory. And now if you do that, all of your tests will go here. Of course, I have to initialize this. So Verify settings is new Verify settings. Here we go. And you do have to pass them on the Verify invocation. So I would do this. And I would do this. And now, even though my tests have moved, they will be mapped to this new directory and they will just match the response. So as you can see, this is all working. But this is just a unit test. What if we have integration tests? Which, by the way, this fits the narrative of integration tests more because I think it is just better when you want to verify things that are more complicated. In integration tests, for example, in APIs, you're testing the whole API response not just the response on the body, because headers are important, things like that are very important, so you want to verify them too. So what I have here is an integration test that is testing a customer's API, and we have a customer's response that I'm expecting, I have the response, I'm reading the response, and then I'm verifying that the status code is 201, I'm verifying that the values of the objects are comparable, I'm verifying that the ID should not be empty, I'm verifying that the header location is where it should be, so it is a lot that I had to write myself and it slows me down. So this is why we're going to add verify, but we're not going to just add verify.xunit, which we will add that package. But because we're going to verify HTTP responses, verify is great at giving you packages specific to use cases. So if I just said verify dot over here, what you're going to see is that we have verify packages for everything from JSON to BUnit to PDF comparison, to documents, to MOQ, to Quest PDF if you want to compare PDFs, to SQL Server if you want to compare directly the values in a table. 
same for Blazor, same for N Service Bus, same for Images. Look at all these packages. It's actually crazy how many packages there are for Verify because it's just so, so valuable. So what we're going to add is the .http package because we want to verify HTTP responses. Now, what I need to do here is set up a bit of an initialization because we want to start recording the HTTP responses because we want to not only verify the values on the metadata, but also the body itself, which by default you don't get unless you call response.content. But that HTTP package allows us to deal with that. So what I'm going to say is verify global settings over here. And then I'm going to say public static void initialize. And I'm going to add two things. First, verify HTTP dot initialize and recording dot start. Those two. Now I'm going to tag it as a module initializer because we need this to run in the very beginning. And after I do that, I'm going to go here and I'm going to delete a lot of my code because now my code will be way more streamlined. I, I don't need to expect anything. So this goes away. I don't need to process anything here. This goes away too. And I don't need to do anything here. All I'm going to say is await verify the response. And that is it. If I now run my test, what I'm going to get over here is not only the response that I got from that HTTP call, but also the body. Because what I see sometimes is people don't verify everything, they just verify the body. But these things can be viable too. If this goes away, someone might consume it differently. Or if the location header is not here, then you might have a problem. So this now, I could just say here, yes, select this and, and agree that this is how this should be, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do it because we have a little problem. This GUID over here is generated on the server and it is random every time. Meaning if I run it again, even though I agree with everything else here, this will fail. So what I want to do is I want to share this value with this GUID one, which has been scrubbed on my behalf from Verify. Verify has something called scrubbers, which can scrub values that can be random or can move all the time and they're not really important and remove them. So the GUID, this should be GUID one here and GUID one here. And same with the daytime as well, by the way. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to leave this test as failing. And what I'm going to say is again, I'm going to say private read only verify settings. And I'm going to initialize that in the constructor. So I'm going to say verify settings equals new verify settings. And I could say uh, use directory, but I'm going to ignore that for now. And I'm going to say verify settings dot scrub inline GUIDs because that would be an inline GUID in this thing over here. So what I'm going to do is just leave everything as it is and I'm going to just go ahead and run this test again. And now what you're going to see is because the GUID that we have in that inline location header matches what we have in the response, there will both be GUID 1 and GUIDs with the same value are matched. So it will be the same GUID just scrubbed so we can run our tests. Now this did not work because I didn't pass my verify settings in the verify call over here. So if I do this now, then here we go. Good one, good one. They're matched. That's what matters. And I'm going to say, yes, I agree with this. Go ahead and save it. And then next time I run it, it will succeed. It will pass as you'd expect. So absolutely great, great package. I do highly recommend that you go and you use the link in the description and give it a start on GitHub. It is an excellent, excellent package. I can't tell you how much I use it on Dome Train, but like I said, because we have a specific package for everything else, you can use things like image shop or image hash to verify the hash of two images to compare them. Like you take a screenshot of your website and you make sure that there is no drift. Even anti framework, where you can use it to verify EF core stuff. Like it's just amazing. If you if you think that this is cool. I can guarantee everyone has a use case for this. You should be using this. It is my favorite way of testing. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about all this? And do you have an alternative type of testing? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.